Hello, my name is Todd Miranda, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to animate a path using point animation in WPF. So let's begin in Microsoft Visual Studio 2008. We'll do File, New Project, and we're going to create a project, a WPF application. So let's begin by creating a name, and we'll just name this appropriately animating path all right okay so our project is going to start up and the first thing that we're really going to want to do is create the path that we're going to animate so we'll start here we'll open up our XAML view a little bit more and we're just going to leave the to begin with and we'll create a path and let's go ahead and say that this path is going to have a stroke of perhaps, well, let's just do blue, or we'll do blue-violet, something like that. And then let's do stroke thickness, and we'll set the stroke thickness to, we'll say, uh, 2. Maybe that's something that should be easy enough to see. Okay. So there's the beginnings of our path. Now, normally you might see a uh, something like this. You might have the data element, and then you might have a something like this, and then you'd have other, and then you might have even some uh, some other numbers, some, some S and some numbers. But what we're going to do is instead of and, and that uses path markup language language uh, for the path to be able to specify the data that makes up or the segments that make up a path using this uh, this mini language this this path markup language we're going to specify the path using a a collection of segments all right so setting the path data is the property that we want to work with and in our in our uh, path data we're going to have a path geometry and within our path geometry we're going to work with the path geometry geometry dot figures and then within our path geometry dot figures we're going to have a path figure Now technically this is a figures collection within that, but the figures collection is an assumed uh, property, so we don't have to specify that. So for our path, the first property that we want to set is the start point. So this is the start point for this particular, and we're just going to specify the start point of, I don't know, let's say um, 30, comma 80. All right. So the first segment that we're going to have in our path figure is a line segment. And the line segment has a single point as its property. And this is the end point of the line. So we're going to go from 3080 to, we'll say, 30 or from 3080 we'll go to 5080. All right, so that draws, we can see a short little line here. It just gives us a good start, just a small little line. Now, we're also going to have another line segment down here. And in between the line segments, we're going to do a quadratic Bezier segment. All right, so let's take a look at some of the properties here. A quadratic Bezier segment is 0.1, and we have a 0.2. And our is the the first the control point for a quadratic BZA segment. So let's say since we're starting at 5080 because each segment starts at the end point of the previous segment. So we're starting at 5080. Let's go uh, in a little bit. So let's go in to 70, and then let's go up to maybe we'll say 20, and then point two 
we'll go 90 and then back down to 80. Okay, so this is our, our quadratic BZA segment, and this, can, this line that you see here is this other line segment come joining back to there. So we'll fix the, the point of that other line segment in just a minute. So let's add another quadratic BZA segment. We'll just do a what looks like a little bit of a sine wave here. So we went from 70 to 90. So this is going to go to let's do another 20 along that path. And we want that to be, we went from 20 to 80 along the y-axis. So we want to go to from 80 to 140 and then 2 will be back to 80 y and our x will be 130 okay and then we'll fix our line segment going from 130 to 80 we'll go to 150 80 just so we get a little tail there so we got a tail at the beginning and a tail at the end just something to kind of anchor our curve all right, so you can see we've got this, this sine wave here. So that's our path. We've created our path now. So let's just go after our path. Let's put a button so we can have something to, to actually trigger the, the animation. So we'll say the con just see start. Maybe we'll do a margin of uh, 0, 150, 0, 0. That'll just towards the, the bottom and then we want to click event and we'll use the this nice new error handler we'll double click that and it puts an error handler here and it'll also create that error handler in our code behind which is really kind of nice and we'll hit that button okay so that's going to here it's going to create just a big button that's going to fill the entire horizontally it's going to fill the window and that's fine uh, for a demo. We'll just have a big So we've got our button to begin our animation. We've got our path that we're going to animate. Now we animate our animation. Let's go into here. Do window.resources. And we're going to put this in a resource block so that we can trigger it with the, with in this case, it's going to be our button event. And we're going to create a storyboard. And obviously, since it's resources we need to give it a key and we'll just call this point animation now let's have in our storyboard let's do a point animation because we're going to be animating a point let's say that we want the repeat behavior to be forever because we'll just want this to repeat over and over. And we actually also want it to auto reverse. All right, so what that's going to do is we're going to animate these points here. And we're going to have them animate from this location down to this location. So we're going to swap them effectively. And then repeat that over and over again. All right, so there's our repeat behavior reverse equals true. So let's go down here and we'll do storyboard.target name. All right, now the target name needs to be the segment that we want to animate. So let's go down here and we'll name our segments. So we'll give them a name. This is, let's just call it quadratic BZA segment one. And we'll name our segment to quadratic BZA segment two. That should be easy to remember. So our target name for this one is going to be quadratic bz. The storyboard dot target property is going to be point one. This is the control point for our segment. Okay. So that looks good. I don't think we've forgotten anything there. We're going to and we're going to make this one target QBS two and point one as well. All right, now we need to specify the from and to points that we point. We want the point animation to uh, to act upon. So we want to say from. All right. Now we want to go from its current position. The current point one for QBS one is 
Well, from seventy. Since the sum and two have to be points, so that means we're going to need two. So if we're going to go from seventy twenty, and we want to go all the way to seventy. And look at where this one goes to, 140. All right. And same thing for our second point animation. We'll do it. Except it's going from 110, 140 to 110, 20 which is where this one started. So like I said, we're just going to swap their positions like so. All right. So there's our point animations, our path. Let's go to our code behind. This dot find resource. And I think we named our resource point animation. All right. So we're going to say, uh, let's go up here and let's add using system dot windows dot media dot animation. We could actually get rid of much of this. Probably get rid of all of this. And we're going to come in here and we're going to say storyboard SB equals as, oops, as storyboard. So we're going to find the resource called point animation bring it in so we've got our storyboard and then we're going to call the begin method a framework element that is in the same uh, at the same level in the UI so we have our storyboard and we begin the storyboard since I've missed anything I think I got a little happy with my removing we need system what a window is so we build build succeeded let's run this alright so here's our window we click our button and we see that our path is now animating so animation to animate a point uh, in this particular case, we were animating the point of a point makes up uh, a point on some shape that you created. It could be the point that defines the center point for a circle or an ellipse, or it could be the point that defines one of the other parts of an ellipse. You could change the ellipse shape. So lots that you can do with point animation. It's fairly simple to use point animation as well, but it allows you to directly pinpoint the point that you want to change and then animate that point across some X and Y value.